Hello, my name's Kat and I'm the Biomechanics Project Lead and Consultant at the English Institute of Sport, or the EIS for short. The EIS supports 40 Olympic and Paralympic sports. We have eight high performance centres around the UK and support sports in a number of different areas and disciplines. This includes things like strength and conditioning in the gym, things like nutrition, physiology, psychology and broader areas including athlete health, sports intelligence and innovation. Sports biomechanics specifically is about looking at the sport and trying to understand it from its very simplest building blocks, using physics and maths to work out how to improve performance and reduce injury. Let's use long jump as an example. You want your athletes to jump as far as possible, but how do you know what to focus on to make them better? Well, we can use some technology to look at the speed the athlete approaches the board with. We can then use some video to have a look at the angle they take off at, at relative to the horizontal, shown here in the orange. Once the athlete is in the air, the only th force acting on them is that of gravity, which will act downwards. Because of these limited forces acting in the air, we can use some equations to work out different elements about the jump. We know, for example, that the athlete's centre of mass will move in a curved shape called a parabola. And from that, we can work out both the height and the overall distance of the jump. And we can use the elements of training, including speed and takeoff angle, to look at what we should work on and to work out how best to train. A lot of Olympic and Paralympic sports are a bit more complicated than this, but we want to try and understand them anyway, and particularly in the field where things are pretty hard to measure. Here we've got a Paralympic champion paddling on water on a misty day. This typically is really hard to actually collect any data on, but one of the things that we try and do and specialise in is, is those challenging data collections. What you can see is the athlete's wearing a suit and that suit allows us to measure all of the movements they're doing and recreate it using this mannequin on the right. This system is really great for allowing us to collect data in really difficult situations. But as you can see, the software isn't so developed to enable the athlete to have a paddle in the mannequin. And yes, they are paddling with a sword. We can also record all sorts of data on athletes. This example here shows someone running on a treadmill. And not only do we have the force measured under each foot, but you also have a heat map of the pressure, showing if there's any particular parts of the foot that are putting more force through than others, as well as a skeleton created using wearable tech. My job changes every day. One day I might be next to the lake, the next day I might be in a gym working with a power lifter, the next day I might be with a skeleton athlete at a push start track. But all of these projects are underpinned by data and technology and numbers. So I'm regularly using maths and coding to understand performance and to try and give improvements to these athletes. I loved science because I loved finding out how things worked and I loved sport all the way through my life. Being able to combine sport, sport and science has been amazing and to be able to help people realise their dreams and become Olympic athletes has been even more amazing. There are loads of roles within sports science that you don't necessarily know exist. And I definitely couldn't have said I wanted to be a biomechanist when I was younger as I didn't know what the word meant until I was about 17. There's no such thing as someone who's not good at science or maths. Everybody can improve in those areas with a little bit of effort and a little bit of patience. Choosing the subjects you like best will mean you're more likely to carry on doing them and to enjoy doing them as well. Science, technology, engineering and maths can all be applied in sport to huge effect and it's an area that's just growing within sport. Thank you for listening and I hope I've given you a little insight into sports biomechanics. I look forward to meeting some of you as sports scientists of the future.